What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. We are here for the part two of chapter 18 of Rachel Goes Rogue, Going Rogue with Joe Wenberg. I very much appreciate that you allowed me to do this in two parts. It's been crazy over here. And not to mention that this was a much longer episode because her and Joe had a lot to say. So let's not waste any time. Make sure to like this video. Make sure if you have not heard part one, you go back and listen to it because this is part two. Make sure you're subscribed and you have your notifications set to all. All right, breathe in, breathe out, let's go. It's so hard, like, going through this reality TV experience and... Yeah, I'm... Especially not having... Following in your footsteps, sorry, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah not having anyone, and now I kind of know your relationship status with Schwartz right now. Yeah, and you do know my relationship status with Schwartz, because I've talked to you about it. Yeah. yeah. You don't really have him as a great support system I in this moment. I do not anymore, no. In this moment, I do not. Correct. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's from your choosing... It's from both of Tom Schwartz, who I call T-Money, and my also choosing. Um, mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we don't talk anymore. And we're going to do a little bit of a boundary situation. And that doesn't mean that we might not talk in the future. But for right now, you know, it doesn't mean that I don't miss him. It doesn't mean that he doesn't miss me. Mm -hmm. Our relationship was very organic. It was very... Granola, very simple, very easy, very, um, you know, you list all the things that you want to have in a partner. They were there. The one thing that wasn't there probably was trust. And that's okay because who am I to say who he needs to be with or who he doesn't need to be with? What I need to do is I need to move on and work on myself. It doesn't mean that I have to talk any type of, you know, crapola. It's the Italian, yeah, about <laughs> Tom Schwartz. Mm -hmm. It means that I look back and I feel very grateful that I had um, somebody in my life that made me so happy. We could not have laughed more. Um, and I think that we could have worked through it. However, we're in different places in our lives and I support his place and I support, you know, myself and we're not on bad terms at all. It's just, you know, I had to set some boundaries and I feel good about that. And I wish him all the best with his new girlfriend. And I first off, Joe, crapola is not Italian. It's actually slang, and it's actually considered rubbish, defined by Merriam-Webster. Like, that's what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, you used it correctly, but it's not Italian, girl. And I think her relationship with Schwartz was already a situationship. It was complicated. They weren't defining the relationship. I don't think that they knew uh, what the relationship actually really was, if it was more than a friendship, if, if it was just a friendship. At that point, he had just literally got divorced. I don't know where she was in her status in life at that point, but he was grieving that process and knowing that, you know, it had a lot to do with what he did that affected that divorce to happen. And he even said multiple times, even Winterhouse, that he was not ready for a relationship. And I kind of feel like maybe she kind of pushed him a little bit more than he wanted. And that's why she maybe felt like they were more than what they were. But I think it's for the best. He seems very happy with his new girlfriend. I don't really know who said what if he kind of said, listen, we can't do this anymore, or if it was her, or if it was the both of them, but I'm glad that they have boundaries set, and, you know, welcome to how Katie felt, Joe, except she was with him for much, much longer, and she needed to do what was best for her, what was healthier for her, and set boundaries in her own life, and I Maybe you don't realize it yet, but you guys have a lot of similarities in common because of Schwartz, and that's now because of you, but there are some similarities with the two of you because 
he swatched both of you. And I will say, I have to give recognition where recognition is due. I did see that on Reddit. So this was a comment that was recent. Um, it was actually done on the 14th. But it says, the most infuriating thing about this episode is Joe's insensate need to defend Schwartz when he was arguably more cruel to her than even Katie or the girls. He gaslit her the entire season. He made her look like a stage five clinger on camera, all while being completely different to her off camera. He allowed the girls to be nasty to her, didn't defend her at all, and instead chased after her with a half-hearted, Joseph, what happened? Schwartz is a menace, and he has been allowed to hide behind his fingers in the mouth oh my gosh, persona for too long. He is one of the most dark-sided people on the show. Look at the earlier seasons where any type of altercation broke out. He is always the first person to lunge at a woman. It's exhausting watching the woman turn on other women when the issue is always Schwartz. Edit. I don't know how I missed the Sloppy Joe incident, but laughing along with everyone instead of telling James that's not cool because she's his friend is yet another instance of Schwartz's dark-sided behavior. This was another great comment, and it says, she literally says something along the lines of how depressed she's been because she spent Almost every day for a year with Schwartz and then being all I love you and her thinking that they were dating and full on together to then just be cut off and realize that it wasn't real. The fact that she still doesn't see the parallels to what happened with Ariana and she still is lifting Sandoval and Schwartz up is unbelievable. And to sit on Rachel's podcast to talk about how you were supporting Sandoval and Schwartz and Sandoval literally recorded Rachel without her consent. And she is now in a legal matter with Sandoval to resolve it. Joe, honey, you don't deserve to be cyber bullied to the extent that you probably are, but you are the problem. And I couldn't agree more with that last sentence. No one deserves to be cyber bullied that horribly. But she needs to also realize that she is the problem here. Now, real quick before we get back to the podcast, this last comment I needed to read to you guys. So Katie apologized to Joe at the reunion. And then Joe still posted the nasty Insta story, but she wants to comment on Katie using her Insta for negativity. Joe needs to pick a lane. Be a victim or be a bully. Don't try to do both. Underneath that, though, says, and she's still this mad and hating on the girls when Schwartz is the one who did her dirty and admittedly lied to them and her? This is the problem with women like Rachel and Joe. Even when the truth is blatantly staring them in the face, they choose to be guys girls and blame people who ultimately have the least to do with their misery. I mean, let's be real here. Every, that first comment that I read, everything that Joe went through with Tom literally reminded me of what Katie went through and how Schwartz treated Katie. He has his own issues that he needs to work out. And I just think that they both deserve better than Schwartz at this point in time. But let's keep going on to the podcast. I hope that, you know, he keeps hiking his pants up and <laughs> walking around screaming, Joseph! And probably not because she's probably there, but you know. Yeah. 
It's tough. It's really tough because I've never been with somebody who uh, really made me smile almost every single second of every single day and then um, and then have it end. And it's not been easy. I've been very depressed about it. And then on top of that, it's been tough to see things going out onto like the World Wide Web. And, you know, Katie did not make it easy. You know, let's just keep adding layers to like no one mm-hmm. asked how I was doing. It's the same with you. I asked how you were doing, Raquel. Mm-hmm. People didn't ask how you were doing. Right. And it's like no one really asked how I was doing besides like you or even some of my closest friends. And it's so interesting to see how I came out of this working on myself. Do you have regrets or I don't have regrets. Tom Schwartz, him and I went through a lot together. We went through almost a year and a half spending five to six days a week together. And like we just had like the best time. So it did show me how to be treated and also showed me how to not be treated, Mm -hmm. you know. And I think when there is a breakup, people think that you're supposed to hate on somebody. I just I can't I just don't hate on him. I just know that we're not compatible right now. Firstly, Joe, you just said that, like, you're not close to anybody, really. But Rachel Schwartz, maybe Sandoval. So who do you expect to call you to make sure you're okay with everything that's been happening with Schwartz and this breakup that wasn't really a breakup, but it was because you guys were supposedly dating, but you weren't dating? And just because you go, Joe, and decide to make group text messages with people that literally just found out by the entire world had an affair with each other along with the victim um you know the person that didn't know that her boyfriend was cheating on her and having an affair to say that you love them all and this is a really hard situation for you and we can't forget You also messaged Katie to tell her that you loved her and that you think she's wonderful and you would be there for her. And then what happened? You pretty much started fucking her ex-husband. So the question is, do you really want any of these people to make sure you're okay? Or would you then come on here and bitch that they messaged you and... You know, it wasn't something that maybe you wanted to hear or was said properly (laughs) or like whatever the case may be. You wouldn't have liked it either way. And I don't think that she really gets like, she's like, oh, me and Schwartz went through so much together and I will, you know, always appreciate everything that we went through because it was so much. So did Katie and Schwartz. Katie? actually went through a whole hell lot more with Schwartz than you ever did, sweetheart. So why can't you understand or respect the fact that what Katie went through was very fucking hard for her? It was more than just a year, sweetheart, like you and him. This is what I mean when I say I just don't think she is very aware of the world around her and everything that goes on and it's kind of all about her and then when I hear this I just think about the comments that we just read on reddit and it's like we all understand what is going on here I don't know if she does though Mm -hmm. or maybe ever you said the only thing missing from that relationship was trust what do you mean by that That's a great question. The only thing that is missing now is trust. Mm -hmm. You trusting him or him trusting you? Me trusting him. From my perspective, it's like he didn't want to commit to you. You're not wrong. It's like he wanted to have his cake and to eat it too. And he wanted to keep you as like a secret side piece almost. You just nailed it. That's 100% correct. Which I feel like is really messed up. Yeah, it is. I should have left. I should have just said no. Good luck. But he would kind of rope me back in. And I have a hard time reliving those those months and days and and hours because we had so many fun times together I also have a really hard time with knowing that he could just like throw me aside and I can't even imagine like I think I'm a good catch you are thank you and at some point and I don't know when I was not aware of when he stopped loving me the only thing that is missing now she said now is trust which 
that doesn't make any sense because how is she missing trust from Schwartz and their relationship is not even in existence anymore? I mean, Schwartz is in a committed relationship. Maybe like a friendship, but she didn't say friendship. She said the relationship. And he didn't want to commit to her because, I mean, he said it over and over again. He wasn't ready yet. He had just got out of a long-ass relationship where they were together for how many years and then were married and then had to get a divorce. Like, that, for some people, takes time. Which Rachel feels it, that was really messed up and that she kind of experienced the same thing with Sandoval. Then Joe says she should have just left and said good luck, but he roped her back in and she was having a hard time reliving those months. Wow. Seems um a little familiar. I kind of feel like Rachel and Joe are trauma bonding together, which, listen, you need that friend that you could, you know, bond with, especially with experiences that you've both been through that are kind of similar. Speaking of similar, I do feel like Schwartz and Sandoval are very similar when it comes to what they do to women. Though there are things that they do that are also different with what they do with their significant others and women that they get with. I know a lot have been saying that VPR, all of these years, tried so hard to portray these men as being one way and that the women were crazy, but really, it's the way that they were treating them that made these women do what they did and said and all of that. Now, Joe also says that she is a good catch. Well, so was Katie, and look what he did to her all of those years. Literally the same thing he did with you, Joe. He did with Katie. Even though their relationship was different, he still exhibited the same patterns. And I don't think that Schwartz stopped loving her. I just think that she thought he loved her like she loved him, and it was a different type of love for Schwartz. Now, I don't know if you guys saw Watch What Happens Live last night, literally Tuesday the 16th. Schwartz did confirm that Sheena was not the girl in Vegas that he made out with years before, that him and Sheena were a different time in Vegas. I thought that was interesting. Also... Schwartz said that Katie has not yet met Sophia, which is his new girlfriend. But Schwartz did say that Katie had very lovely things to say regarding Sophia, which Kristen even joked that maybe she's trying to steal his girlfriend again. But here Joe was saying, like, Katie wouldn't like anybody that Schwartz was with or is with because she doesn't want to see him happy. Clearly, that's not the issue here. I just feel like what Joe did to Katie and, like, him still being within the circle group was the point of why, like, she was unhappy with the situation. And I really don't think, like, she just wants Schwartz miserable. Schwartz also did say, too, which this is crazy, because this was the agree slash disagree game. One of the questions was, is Schwartz guilty of leading Joe on? Which they both disagree. But according to Joe, she feels like he let her on. Another question was, Joe is not as bad as Katie makes her out to be. Kristen said disagree, where Schwartz at first said agree, though he did flip it around to disagree, and then was like, oh, well, wait a second. And you know what? He had not anything bad to say about Joe. He even said, I love Joe. I think she's a wonderful girl. Yada, yada, yada. So I don't know where Schwartz stopped, quote unquote, loving her. And you know, guys, I would have totally played the Watch What Happens Live, but we know no matter how much I transform those clips, they just don't like it. So check out Watch What Happens Live YouTube channel. I will link that down below if you want to see that for yourself. So 
I probably was the last to know, to be honest. I think the thing that is so frustrating is just seeing how he's, you know, acting one way towards you off camera. And then once the cameras are up and running, he's like a completely different person with a different attitude about the whole situation. Big time. I mean, the whole time we were dating, we were, and you saw this, we were so happy. We were in love. We would tell each other we loved each other and we would be extremely just in our own bubble and we liked it that way and and the cameras would come up and it was like I didn't even exist and it was tough it was mind-blowingly tough I'm getting like goosebumps thinking about this and then we'd film again and he would make up these things and say that like we were both dating other people and Mm. I wasn't dating anybody else Mm -hmm. I guess maybe that was his way of saying that he was dating somebody else Um, I was the last to know on honestly everything everything Mm-hmm. And all I was doing was I was just being myself. I noticed that you still use nicknames for him. I do. Yes, Raquel, you are not wrong. <laughs> I do use nicknames for Tom Schwartz. I feel like you've, you're still kind of like grieving that. I'm 100% still grieving. Yeah. I miss him a lot. I also know that he's moved on. So there's nothing you can do. Yeah. It's going to take me a very long time to get to get me to a place of happiness again um, with anybody. Mm-hmm. So... Again, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> so again, last night on Watch What Happens Live, Schwartz was asked, did he feel like he led Joe on? And I'm reading this from the transcripts. He says, I don't like that narrative, honestly. We had such a good time together, and it was a mutually beneficial, super fun relationship like well I don't know if it was a relationship situationship it was fun and we had a good run while it lasted I would also like to point out that another question was do you stand by Joe not knowing about Rachel and Tom since you all went to Big Bear together and he said she knew what they told her she knew just where Andy kind of cut him off and said, what did they tell her? And Schwartz was like, I mean, as far as she was concerned, like me, she knew Tom and Ariana were breaking up. And then, of course, Andy went into, what is your reaction to Joe revealing that you two exchanged I love yous? And he said, um, I think we were fond of each other. But there was, I think it was some sort of shade of love, but I don't think it was the real, actual love. And what, regarding to what Joe said with Rachel, these boys always seem to be two different ways. One way on camera, one way off. And I think they also like to lead people on in the sense that they tell them what they want to hear so that they can benefit from whatever they are trying to benefit from. Again, I will link the Watch What Happens Live YouTube page down below in the description for you all. No, but yeah, I got I got I got mentally fucked up. Like I I've never said that before. Um I haven't been able to kind of get out of bed unless I've, you know, been doing hair and stuff. My job's been taking care of me and the church and like just being able to just have a routine. But you spend time with somebody for, you know, five days a week for a year plus and then it gets cut off. It's kind of like a death. So and then they don't really help you out with your recovery, you know, and then you don't know until later that they're already dating somebody else. And then you were told that he didn't want to date. And, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like pick a lane. You know, Mm -hmm. it's just Mm -hmm. been so mentally frustrating you deserve somebody who's mature and And so do you wants commitment can you walk me through like how you met Schwartz we met at a function with the Vanderpump crew would run into him multiple times and we'd always like high five each other it was like we were brother and sister and um at one point I needed a place to stay 
So I landed Schwartz's. He's like, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. There's two bedrooms, everybody. Right. So he was like, you could just stay with me. I have an extra bed and an extra guest room. Basically, that's exactly what it was. Then how long were you there? Six days. And what was your dynamic with Kitty at this time? I don't think that we even had a dynamic. I mean, I don't, I was never friends with her. Super close. I mean, I remember texting her a text message when they had gotten a divorce back in months prior. And, and um, that's the text message that yeah, she, keeps, that talking she about. just keeps talking about. And I, I had no idea that that was a thing. I mean, I just thought that would, I was like, yeah, we were in a group of people. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll just Because she's it. making it sound like yeah. you were like reaching out as a close friend yeah. and that it was only like a week or two later that Correct. you started hanging out with right. Schwartz. Months, months after. It sounded like me and Schwartz had anything going on whatsoever. If anybody out there can understand this, it's, it's easier to save money. So I wanted to mm-hmm. save money. That was my priority. So when you went to stay with him, nothing happened? Nothing happened. I mean, Katie's making it seem like you were close and then you texted her and a week later you guys like you moved into Schwartz's apartment and you guys were hooking up immediately and that's not the case correct I don't think that that is what Katie is trying to portray at all she's only said that when the divorce went down she didn't say it was a week later Maybe she did and exaggerated a little bit at first, but she's also then come back and said, after the divorce, I got this text message from Joe, and this is what it said. And the text message was in that comment that she even said about the, you know, spooky crackhead energy. I did read it in my last part one of this, if you missed that. But the storyline or timeline of events, I should say, has always been that they knew you through Kristen. You said that you've done hair for some of the cast, yada, yada, yada. She never said you were a close friend. She just said that you had reached out to her after the divorce saying this, and then come to find out when she was visiting Schwartz's, I guess, to get the dog one time, or dogs, I should say, uh, one time, she went to the bathroom, she found the women's jewelry, and that's when she texted Kristen, letting Kristen know that, hey, did you know that Joe was living with Schwartz? And that's also when Kristen kind of was done with Joe, though Joe had already ghosted her because she was hanging out with Schwartz. And even on the after show... I can't remember who said if it was Katie or Kristen. I want to say Katie. But they were talking about how, like, Joe would even text Katie before that point and be like, hey, does Schwartz need a haircut? That was when Katie and Schwartz were together. And even afterwards would text Katie and be like, hey, does Schwartz need a haircut? Like, let him know. I'm available. I think Joe knew Katie and the girls through Kristen, and, like, knew Katie was dating or married to Schwartz kind of a thing, and then after everything was said and done, like, maybe, yeah, she, like, ran into Schwartz, like she said, and then he offered her a place to live. She says six days. Do we believe that she only lived there for six days? Let me know down below. Why does she have so much hatred for you? Well, let's just navigate the first thing. Um, Being close I'm not close to Katie. Never was. Never was. Um, I was able to be there through a text to give her some sympathy on her divorce. Human decency. Yep. And that was thrown in my face. So, and number two, um, it was not the next week that I ever, ever, ever moved in with anybody because I was living at my house at the time. It was months later that I needed a place to stay. You know, Schwartz had an extra bedroom. He had already moved out. It was months later. He was like, yeah, no worries, stay. And I don't really understand why this is such a big deal because it was just nice to have a space to um, to stay uh, in between my house and my apartment. And it just so happened that we caught feelings, but it wasn't until later. Mm-hmm. And we never hooked up. Do you think Katie has, you know, was it just you? Or is it like because it's Schwartz and it's anyone that's dating Schwartz? I can't answer any of these questions because I don't know what's going through her mind. I will say this. I think subconsciously she was a little bit intimidated by the relationship that Schwartz and I had because it was real. Everyone saw it. Like Schwartz and I had such a great bond. You've seen Schwartz and I together. It's been fun. You bring out like I could just tell like you're so authentically you with him and he is so authentically himself with you. And it's heartbreaking to see that like because no, you guys are compatible 
but it just seems like he's not quite in the headspace yeah. to be able to commit to somebody. Yes. And it almost seems like he's ashamed. Yeah, he kept me a secret for a long time, and that was, like, really weird but I didn't really know how to handle that you know and it's weird too because obviously I was a secret for a long time yeah and I thought maybe shorts was like you know like it was a secret thing with you guys like we would go to the bar we'd hold hands we'd make out in the corner and then we would like go on a date and then all of a sudden he would tell the press that we weren't together right for over a year I think the point is that you were closer to Katie than you ever were Schwartz Not that you were close friends, but you were closer to her than you were Schwartz. Even when you used to cut his hair when they were together, you would text Katie about the appointment, not Schwartz. I'd also like to point out that we clearly know it was months later after their divorce because they were living together You know, they had to sell the home and all of that. So clearly it was months later. It wasn't like a week after their divorce. Duh. And I think the big deal was not only was he like hiding you, he was not telling people that like you were living with him either. It was a combination of it. She also says they caught feelings, but they never hooked up. But then later says like, oh, they would go to the bar, hold hands and make out. And she's admitted that, like, they have done the deed. So, like, when did she not hook up with him? It's things like that that just don't make any sense. And then here's Rachel, like, well, do you think it's, like, Katie? And, like, do you, like, think she, like, feels like this, this, this? You don't want them discussing how you all feel. But here you are trying to discuss how they feel about situations. The hypocrisy. Though, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. So neither is right or wrong. Like, you guys can discuss it, but don't be like, oh my god, they're talking about me and I don't get it. When you're talking about them and their feelings. And then there's Joe. Schwartz and me had such a great bond. He was the best when he was with you, Joe. They brought out the authentic you and the authentic him. Okay, um, to me, these are just two girls that both feel like what they had with the Toms, each Tom, was so much better than what, you know, Katie or Ariana had with the Toms. Which, like, realistically, their relationship turned shitty in the end, but does not mean that their relationship wasn't the best at one point either. Or what they went through is less than what you are going through. Are you kidding? And then to say, like, Katie just doesn't want Tom with anybody or, like, she doesn't think that Katie wants him in a relationship with anybody, clearly that's not true. Again, I said it before, I just think it's now he's with somebody that's outside the friend group and it's finally someone that she can, like, either get to know if she chooses or not, but she doesn't really know anything about them. And... It's a different dynamic. And we're seeing this play out on the show this season. Yeah, we we're, are seeing this play out on the show this season. You guys hang out so much. I've seen you guys hang out so much. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, Joe, like, no, we're not yeah. together. But then in the same breath, he'll say something like, I want to marry, I can marry her. Yeah. It's so confusing. Yeah. It's confusing, but then it also makes sense because, like, is he so wrapped up in the perception of what he looks like? And yes. is it Katie that's, like, maybe maybe his mindset is influenced by Katie because Katie just has it out for you? Right. It's all these questions that I don't know, yeah. and I really don't care because at this point, what I do care about, though, is when he says, I don't want to date somebody right now, but he was, and now he has a new girlfriend. That one is the f- messed up part. It's so messed up to me that makes me angry makes me very angry but i will i will take care of it on my own time with meditation and yoga and all the things that one really bothered me because it's not correct because if you don't want to be with somebody then you have to give the right answer but i will say this i wish he would have um you know what no i wish nothing i think he did everything the right way and tom schwartz and myself are in a good place we're Mm -hmm. not speaking but i wish him the best and Mm -hmm. um i think that i can speak on behalf of myself and tom Schwartz, we both could have done so many things differently. Mm-hmm. We both made mistakes. However, we both had the best times together. Yeah. And I want him to really find happiness. And I want him to be the best version of himself. And, you know, I think that you can see that through the season. We bring each other happiness big time. Mm-hmm. However, that's done. 
it's over and I need to move on. Mm -hmm. The moving on part has been tough. Yeah. I yes. think that's the hard, big time. the hardest part, I, especially when you're like thinking about all the good times that you had together. Yes. And all of those moments and the memories and the photos and the everything. And like the thought of like what could be. The moments where I would literally, you know, do the stupidest thing and he'd be right there and like, you know, we'd always be like, you know what they say? And he'd be like, a rabbit decides to cross the road. And I'd be like, oh, and the truck decides to run over a acorn. Like we would just, yeah. we were so, so at some point, hey, everybody out there. Aaron Rodgers, if you're listening, I will date you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Aaron Rodgers is. Who's oh, that? he's a football player. Oh, cute. I feel like he would definitely be my type. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's make that happen. Okay. <laughs> Why is she blaming Katie and saying that maybe it's Katie that influenced his mindset because Katie had it out for her? I just don't get that one. Clearly, Tom Never gave a fuck what Katie felt like. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> like, come on. Which then Joe says, it's all these questions she doesn't know, but she also doesn't care to know. Yet, here she is pondering about them and assuming things that she has no idea about. And if they are true or not, when really, if she didn't want to know, there would be no need to be pondering and if she did want to know then why not ask him or listen to what others are saying too because it's not like they aren't talking about this and how they felt regarding the situation and things i.e example watch what happens live i i know i'm i'm sorry for being controversial here but i will tell you this the producers on the show were the ones that really helped me open up and be like you need to speak about this and I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for that Good. I would have kept my mouth shut in which way hey Joe we're seeing a different side of this that the other mm. how about you kind of open up and like speak a little bit more and it took me a minute but they really really were pushing to be kind to me because they saw before I did mm. and they didn't have to showcase that but they decided to be like we're sick of this. We're sick of we're sick of the shorts. I think in their mind they were sick of the shorts behavior, and they were like, "Let's actually show someone who's really blindsided." Mm -hmm. And the producers and the people and the crew were all like, "You, you know, you have a safe space." And my confessionals and in my interviews, I was so grateful that they helped me through that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would have been able to be vocal about it if it wasn't for them. Mm -hmm. So, I give grace and I give thanks to people in areas of my life that have helped me through certain situations and mm -hmm. that was a big one for me mm -hmm. I mean I'm just saying I mean I that's no, my journey I hear you I think production does a really good job of being observant of people's yep. behavior and seeing the miss just like the disconnect between certain things that they observe but then potentially not saying the actual but then they didn't have to do that to, they could have easily let me look like a fool mm. but they really were like look Joe without saying anything we want you to talk. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. I love how she says, I hate to be like controversial here. And then goes into how like production helped her and told her she had to stand up for herself and speak her truth. But yeah, that's kind of what they did with Rachel, especially with everything that was going on with the affair when they picked the cameras back up. And had like that one on one sit down with her and all of that. And she felt a different way about how production was pushing her to say things and all of that. And clearly, Joe knows where Rachel and production stand right now and everything that's going on that like she's pretty much blaming the entire show, production evolution, for what she went through. And I felt heard. I mean, I'll be honest. I would not have been able to get to this place unless somebody pushed me to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And not only that way, but also on international television. Yeah. Um, I felt very lucky to be in a place that no matter what transpired, no matter what was edited, I felt for once able to speak on what I was feeling, what I was listening to, what I was being told, mm -hmm. all that. And mm -hmm. I said it in front of a camera and I stuck to it and I got heartbroken and i hope that maybe somebody out there is 
you know, can relate to that. Mm -hmm. You filmed the reunion. Yes. Do you think the cast had a different perspective on your relationship with shorts after seeing the way that it has been playing out? Yes. At the reunion, when it, whether or not this is going to get aired, I hope it does at the reunion. But when it came down to it, the cast really was under the impression that I was lying about my relationship with Schwartz. And Schwartz was the one who was kind of keeping me behind the scenes. And that makes sense from what Schwartz has been exposing me as. They were baffled. It was really neat to see kind of like a gasp of like, oh, you not only lied to Joe, but you lied to us. And you also lied to Andy and you lied to everybody. And like, it's very clear throughout the season that you guys were together. But we all thought that Joe was the liar. And mm. when in reality, Joe was the one who was being honest. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember what the reaction was of Schwartz. And I don't know if it's going to air. I hope it, I really hope it does. And, you know, Katie apologized to me too, you know? So it was kind of like a weird full circle moment. Mm. I was, I was, I was shocked. I, I couldn't believe that even one of the, you know, seven, eight people on these couches would even listen to like my side of the story. And like, listen, honestly, it was almost like a reverse. I mean, I just remember looking at all our faces and being like, holy moly, Joe isn't the bad person. And not that Schwartz is a bad person, but no, it was a big switch. Yeah. It's like yeah. a reverse Uno card. It, yeah. And like, it made me feel uncomfortable. It made Schwartz feel uncomfortable because like, I don't want to put Schwartz in a bad position, but it also made me feel kind of comfortable because people were finally realizing that, you know, A, I'm not really comfortable even being here, but I'm excited to be here because I want to speak my truth at the reunion. Yeah. And when I did speak my truth, it was almost like a big aha moment from the cast I mean, let's be real. That's kind of what happened with Sandoval and, well, Rachel, too, where the cast was completely shocked because of what was happening. And Sandoval was telling Rachel one thing, kind of like what Schwartz was doing with Joe, telling her one thing and doing another. There are just so many similarities and, like, slight ways that it's crazy. I mean, it's not really a new thing that these boys lie to everybody. Like, they've lied about things for so many years to so many people. So I guess there is a lot of oh my gosh moments, especially with those two. I will say the difference is that at least Joe was being honest with everything that was happening. Rachel, not so much. And I don't think, I don't know why she thinks that like, no one would want to listen to what she had to say because I think if she actually tried to talk to them and explain what she was feeling or what she thought she was going through, they would have listened too. And didn't she sit down with Allie and like Allie did say like, oh, I asked her about like her and her relationship with Schwartz and she kind of deflected from it and wouldn't talk about it. So then Allie like reworded it in a way that she kind of talked about it, but then she compared again, even here, to their relationship being like a brother-sister kind of relationship, which is so awkward to say, especially if you are in a like dating relationship with somebody. <laughs> that is just so weird. And another thing I realized too, like just listening to this, Joe really likes to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat what she's saying. It's like we're going around in circles. I'm not going to lie. It could be the ADHD, which like I said, nothing against her. I have it. So I understand. And I get sometimes I even repeat myself over and over again. I just feel like maybe like with a podcast, like even me doing these videos, we kind of need to be a little bit like self-conscious to what we are saying and doing so that we're not going around in circles or saying the same thing over and over again. Or maybe she's even doing it just to like reiterate her point. I'm not too sure where, but I think we are getting what you're putting down. That's all I'm trying to say there. I feel like it it did you a disservice because if he was just honest and truthful, it would have been great. It would have been, you know, like, oh, maybe. maybe not even great, but it would have been like real. And it wouldn't have put you in a position where you are now looking like a crazy, Correct. like crazy, girl crazy girl who's like him? crawling like, oh, after well. him every time. Like, I'm just always following him. I'm always like trying to like, you know, I'm always at his ankle. Like, no, or, like inserting yourself. Right. And, like, and in reality, it was the opposite. And then when that truth finally came out at the reunion, everyone was like, <gasps> And they all just kind of like looked at me differently. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I don't care how they looked at me, but it was a moment of like shock and, 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 you know, Sheena was giving me a tissue and I'm not sure if it's going to air, but I'm hoping so because then Schwartz goes into the whole, 
she's a light of my life. She's awesome. She's great. Like I should have all the things. Uh, and then it's like a da 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 da. Yep. So it's, I'm having a hard time between being like telling the truth, which is exactly what I'm telling, and then also not ripping shorts apart because he is a good person. Mm -hmm. But I think he needs to work on himself. Mm -hmm. But that's not my place to tell him. Mm -hmm. It's my place to work on myself and talk about my experience. And I hope that he can get to that place one day as well, individually. That's such a mature perspective. It's a true. I mean, this is, is what we're, we're learning this, I know. you know, this in our is, life. This is what we've been talking about. Like, yeah. We, and this is the problem with codependency, too, is like, yeah, as I much was, as you want somebody to help themselves, yeah. they will not no. unless they want to. I wanted so badly to help him with so many avenues and aspects of his life. And it was positive and positive and positive, And he was so grateful and all these things. But then it's like he, you know, it, I realized I wasn't getting the same back and I wasn't able to get the same amount of love and support back. Um, and I'd have to ask for a lot of that. And, um, he would give it to me, but I realized that uh, I had to really weigh the pros and cons. And, you know, to this day, if it was me and Schwartz on an island somewhere, I would be so happy because he wouldn't have his phone and he wouldn't be on a TV show. Yeah. He's such a good person. It's just a matter of where he's at in his life. And I hope that he's doing great. And um, I also, you know, I mean, I'm not a person to get mad at people for treating me poorly. I'm a person that's just going to work on myself and make sure that I can just talk to my friends and talk to them about my things that I'm having going on in my life, I want to like get through it on my own. And I just think that will. that should have been, yeah, I will. And I think that that should have been given to me as well. No one gave that grace to me though. So, and yeah. no one gave that to you either. So yeah. Yeah. Well, we're resilient. We're yeah. Stick in with it. <laughs> I felt like I was listening to Katie for a second because she very much said the same thing about shorts and their relationship and everything that joe just said katie has gone through with schwartz and i kind of feel like joe is forgetting that and katie dealt with it for a lot longer the things he did and said about katie were disgusting and he did the same with joe Maybe not as vile and disgusting as he did with Katie, but he did the same with Joe. And I'm glad that she, like, mentions that Katie apologized and, like, the cast was there for her. Yet, here they are still trashing these people that have a different outlook after everything that has happened. You move on from that. You don't keep, um you know, bringing up the past and what they did and said, how they treated you when now it's different. You are making it so that they continue to have an issue with you, though they feel bad for you. They've apologized. Just like even after the reunion, you still did what you did to Katie and Dana with the whole iHeartRadio sizzle or fizzle. Katie literally apologized and said she felt so bad for you because she could understand what you went through. But you still chose to be a petty Betty for whatever reason. And then you wonder why they have a problem. And who was she expecting grace from? Can we be real though? Like literally anyone that came into the group never got grace. They all dealt with their own traumatic turmoil with their like kind of initiation into it all sheena's had trouble with the group lala's had trouble with the group it's not just rachel and joe a lot of them have felt that way and there were people that did things on purpose to make them feel that way because they felt like maybe they didn't want somebody new in their group or whatever the case may be but they're not the only ones a lot of these girls went through hell with the people and the cast. All right, we're going on to the last part, which is still long, too. Like I said, this episode was super freaking long. And I think it's because they went around in so many circles and they both had a lot to say. It's time for our breathe in, breathe out. Let's go. At the reunion, from what you did experience... And because there's been rumblings of like, oh, this was an explosive reunion, um. <laughs> which as by the way, I was only on. Well, I was there from the chunk of time that I was on. And then I had to wait like six hours and then I had to go back to the like cheersing with oh, a sandwich. Gosh. gosh. So oh. like the six hours in between I was I'm not even I was like playing Angry Birds. But yeah, there is a camera and a video thing that you can watch. Yeah. As you're in the green room. And I didn't see anything because I was people were in and out and I wasn't watching much of it. But it was from what I witnessed. I should have watched more. Man, I'm just the worst. I was like going outside and 
Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Rumblings. Well, from what you saw, what was the dynamic between Lala, Sheena, and Ariana? Ariana said nothing to me. Katie wouldn't. Whatever. See, I don't even know their dynamic well enough to even know. I mean, it just seemed that like Lala was very uh, matter of fact and she was really calling out people and she was calling out moments with Sheena and she was calling out moments even with Katie and she was calling out moments with Ariana. And it felt like that was kind of like, to be honest with you, why wouldn't you, you know, do it in a nice, concise way? There wasn't any. Again, when I was out there, it was more of like, let's talk about Joe. And so I was just like, oh, crap. So I didn't really get to see much of their dynamic. Yeah. Because I decided that I wasn't going to really watch behind the scenes because I'm was, assuming that I was a topic of conversation you were a massive topic of conversation <laughs> I almost like wanted to drag out a chair at one point and and like put like your little face on it and put like Raquel next to <laughs> I was like is this a joke but I couldn't tell anybody because Sheena was on my left and Schwartzy was on my right and I was like in my mind I was I think I giggled to Schwartz I was like we should bring out like a like a you know like a blanket like just an empty chair and and put like Raquel's face and he was like <laughs> you know he was he, he was like all for it you know yeah. and then like and then Andy was like and Joe let's talk about you again I'm like oh, oh yes oh yes I'm here I'm here <laughs> yeah no it really was it was like oh my god we need to move on we do it's wild it's wild I mean it's not even on the fuck sorry on the reunion on the show I mean it's just on the internet on the yeah I mean it's just like you just you can't catch a break yeah. You just cannot catch a break. Even if you want to eliminate yourself completely from everything, you still are getting torn into this and, and dragged into this. And um, I really applaud you for being – taking your platform and making it a positive thing because yeah. being here right now is really cathartic and positive for me. Mm, and I'm good. just so proud of you. Good. I'm so, proud of you too. And this is where I feel like this is how Joe just doesn't get what is being said to her. She asked how the girls' dynamics – were with each other because the rumblings have been said that there were issues and fights and friendships that may never be the same again i mean she does eventually get to that point saying like she did not watch to see the dynamics and all of that and of course joe when you are out there they're going to ask you about you and situations that involve you since you are not there for the entire thing or like not a main cast member that when they bring you out, they're going to talk about things that involve you. That's how they do it with anyone that's a friend or so of the show. Like even when they bring Brock out and even Allie, you know what I mean? And here we go again. People just need to move on. And oh my God, you were just the topic of the reunion, Rachel. Again, this season was everybody picking up the pieces from finding out that you and Sandoval had an affair with each other. And that was literally taped only a month to two to three it depended, like, they said it started two months after the reunion and the affair was found out. But it only happened right after while everyone was dealing with it that summer. While we were over here still trying to figure out what the hell went on. And all of the things that came out last summer and so on and so on. So yes, during the reunion, they have to reflect back on everything that was going on and talk about it. So I don't see why she doesn't understand that she is a topic, of course, still, because of everything that went on. And does she forget, like, she did get out of rehab, then go do Bethany Frankel. She has since started her own podcast, which the reunion was taped recently, which they can talk about what you've said on your podcast. And you tell everybody else that they need to move on, but these two technically are not moving on either. Rachel, every week, talks about the show, them, people on the show, all of that. She also just had a lawsuit go through the court system, which to me shows she's not moving on. Not that she doesn't have a right to sue people but with everything being said and done it just shows me personally that I don't think she has moved on yet either so stop telling others to move on when you keep talking and we want to discuss what you are saying 
as well as others. And again, you need to remember when the show was taped, why you were a topic of conversation. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Unfortunately, you're going to be the topic of conversation for a couple of more months, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 15 months of shame. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I know. It's like you're not even on the show anymore. And you're oh, just like... Yeah. Okay. So you're obviously you're not close with Katie. Duh. You're not. No. You're not talking to shorts. Mm -hmm. um, you and Tom Sandoval. I, I still really care about him. Um, we'll text here and there, but I don't have anything against him besides the, you know, besides the. Ugh. Yeah. Besides. Yeah. The video. Obviously, yeah. Sheena just wants to take off your hat at all times, so we're not friends with her. Well, I'm not friends with really. Okay, so friends is a general term for me for sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. What thank you. Is friendship? Okay. Friendship. Yeah. What is friendship get on there. this show? Because what? Yeah. yeah. I anyway. don't know how you did this. I mean, I was very, I very, very. It was a. It was a conundrum for my brain. I was like very confused all the time. Listen, I was like, are oh, wait. I thought no. Oh, what? Yes. Okay. Together. Nope. Not what? Yeah. What about Allie? Because you guys had a moment where yes. you got drinks and yes. she was asking about your relationship with Schwartz. Yes. Yes. And she was asking me about like what I thought of him. And I said, look, I really think that, you know, I was like, Allie, look, I think that I really can see Tom Schwartz being somebody, somebody very similar to like my dad. Um, because, you know, I mean, for me personally, I have a great dad and every girl wants to have a person in their life as a partner that's similar to their father. If you've had a good father. If you've had a good father. Yes. And I told her that and she agreed. And then I think it got misconstrued because at some point somebody said later at, at Hotel Ziggy, oh, you have sex with your dad or something. And like, I don't really want to like, that was like really messed up. What was said was, it was um, thank you. Yes. Good job. Schwartz, yes. 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 You said yes. Schwartz reminds me of my dad. Yes. And then it was like yes. misconstrued yes. to like... Yes something incestual these are five women that don't even know me as well so it was nice that Allie had dinner or you know drinks with me and had done my reading but for somebody to relay that information to five people around a table at Hotel Ziggy and then mm. speak on behalf of like me and I'm not even located I'm in the corner plugging my ears um oh, yes you know so at that point um I didn't take it to heart because I don't know these people well enough to care about what they say um and I really do think that Allie kind of was kind of like just you know she just kind of said it and I I, I I didn't have a problem with her I, uh, what I had a problem mm -hmm. with was the afterwards where Katie was talking about making me uncomfortable. I mean, I already was uncomfortable. And I just think that we should all date somebody like our dad if, like, our dads are, like, lovely humans. And, yeah, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I felt like Allie was a little bit catty. It seemed like she kind of knew what she was doing with interpreting it and, like, feeding it to the girls who were already talking crap about you. I think these girls just don't have the same concept of what a friend is who a close friend is and who is like your best friend i have a lot of friends on youtube and i have a lot of friends in life they know me maybe we don't talk all the time we talk here and there but i would can still consider them a friend somebody i care about and at this point, everyone's definition of what a friend is, a best friend, a close friend, all of that is going to be different. And if you have any confusion on where you lie, even in a relationship or a friend, you need to be open and honest and ask. Communication is key. I mean, clearly that's why they were in a situationship, her and Schwartz, because they never actually communicated about what they felt and how they felt and what they were and rachel if you're gonna ask questions let joe answer we don't need your little petty betty remarks afterwards joe just said how lovely Allie was and that even what she said at hotel ziggy to the girls she didn't care that like Allie had said it it was the way everyone else interpreted it but of course, there's Rachel. Well, I believe that she knew exactly what she was doing. She was being catty. Just like you know exactly what you do and say when you do catty things as well. And the whole, like, he reminds me of my dad thing. You just even said in the podcast, and you've said on the show too, that you and Schwartz have like a brother-sister relationship. And he reminds you of your dad. But it's weird because, first off, no brother and sister have a relationship, like, where they're intimate unless, like, 
that's incest. I don't even want to get into that. That's just weird. So just saying that, it's weird. It's like me and my boyfriend are like brother and sister. No, 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 no. If anything, you would compare it to like me and my boyfriend are the best of friends. He knows me every which way and out kind of a thing. And I will say, yes, some women, without even realizing it too, they look for men that are similar to the men that they have in their life, whether it's a father figure or a brother figure. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. I was always told growing up, like, you want a man that is like your grandfather and your father, more my grandfather, that's a different story though, um, where he, my grandfather treated my grandmother like she was a princess. Anything and everything she wanted, he did. He was the sweetest, kindest, most gentlest man ever. He did anything for anyone. Yes, those are traits I want in a man as well. Just like there are traits in my father that I would be wanting in a man as well. Like, my dad's a very hard worker. He knows how to do anything and everything. Like, he's done the house. He's rebuilt houses. He he knows how to do electrical construction. Like, he's an all-around handy man. He knows how to do anything and everything kind of thing. And that was always something that I also wanted traits of my father finding a guy that was similar in that sense that had the same qualities my dad and my grandfather had. I think when it comes to situations like where you're trying to compare it like that, you have to be more direct. Because if you're just saying, oh, we have like a brother and sister relationship, or he reminds me of my dad, people can interpret that in a different perspective. And it could sound very weird. That's why you should give context to it like you're kind of doing here. Now we understand. See, here's where I have a problem with this. Talk is talk is talk is talk is talk. Okay. So there might have been a moment or a motive or subconsciously or consciously. I don't think she consciously tried to hurt me in that moment. Um, I don't know. But I think that moments like that don't bother me as much as moments where people kind of like target you for being a certain way. Yeah, my dad wasn't happy about it, but we also all move on and we also kind of I think at the end of the day, what bothered me the most, if we can really talk about this, is at Hotel Ziggy, I was very uncomfortable. And the girls, and I'm not going to say Lala, and I'm not going to say Allie. I'm going to say Sheena, and I'm going to say Katie. I mean, my goodness, rat girl, I'm so glad that she's uncomfortable. You know, things like that are the ones that keep me up at night and think about, like, not that I care, mm-hmm. but I do care. I care deeply about how somebody sees who I am. Whether or not they're a friend or not a friend, I've just never been able to express this before until right now and just say, look, even if you don't know the people that talk about you, you know, I wouldn't see it if they didn't have a million followers, to be honest. Mm. So I guess it's just a matter of like what you're doing, Raquel, is you're using your platform for positivity. I really just wish that that would be the same thing for them as well. I just don't get it. And I I will say it again. They don't know me well enough to hate me. Mm -hmm. So benefit of the doubt. Here we go with the talking in circles again. Unfortunately, in this cruel world that we live in, people can hate you without even knowing you. Does it suck? It does. But those are the people that you just don't even focus on. The people that know you and care about you should be your number one priority. Everything else shouldn't matter. What they say and do shouldn't matter. People will learn to love you for who you are, and if they don't, that's their loss, not yours. And those women can do whatever they want on their platform, just like Rachel can, just like you can, Joe. You might not have a million followers yet, but you, Joe, can also use your platform for good and positivity as well. Please stop complaining that like you don't have a platform when you do. Just because you don't have a million subscribers doesn't mean you don't have a platform. I'm an even smaller creator and I have a platform and all I want is the best for everybody. But I'm here also to discuss, to learn, to have fun and to enjoy something I enjoy with everybody else.
And when I can use my platform for good, you best believe I will. And there is very little that I would ever use my platform for for bad. That's just not who I am. And will ever be, no matter how much people push me to a limit, I will never use my channel for the way that other people use theirs. Which, there are people, and you'd be surprised, that literally all they do on their channel is bully, harass, and attack people. It's gross. But that's another subject. We are almost done. Let's keep going. I think the girls are now trying to say that you had a panic attack and yes. that's why you left, which I don't think is accurate. Yes, it's not accurate. So at Hotel Ziggy, the, that night I had had a conversation with Schwartz on the way to the hotel, Hotel Ziggy, for James's, you know, DJing thing. And uh, I had gotten a phone call from, I believe it was my mom, and there was some family matters that had gone on. And I told Schwartz not to say anything, and he didn't. And so I had already shown up very scared. Distraught. Very distraught. And I was hoping that everyone could get along, which I think that everybody should, yeah. unless you have a reason to not. And it just went the 100%, 180 degrees the opposite. Um, not even having a conversation with them, they mm-hmm. immediately attacked. Not They just had a, a, it was almost like they already had like um, a reason to hate me but without knowing me. And when you're there and you're sitting there and you're listening to all these other people like talking about you and you just like, all you want to do is plug your ears and kind of go into like your own little shell and like just like not, you know, not hear it. I mean, I just, I didn't want to hear it. I had enough on my plate and I just like don't have enough space in my brain to talk about that stuff and mm-hmm. like think about that stuff. That's not true. Mm-hmm. So like let them go and talk crap about me. That's fine. But I'm going to like do this and I'm going to like walk away, fight or flight. I'm going to fly. And I did. And it might have cried. I'm a cancer and I'm a very passionate person. So I flew and I went and I had to just get myself out of there. And it just doesn't make sense for me to stick around. What am I going to go do? Like tap Sheena on the shoulder and be like, Hi, how are you again? Oh, can you stop talking bad about me? No, with those girls, they will gang up on you. I want to get the heck out. You know, it doesn't make sense for me to even give any type of energy. I want to give my energy to my dog. I want to give energy to, you know, my mom at the time. You know, I wanted to call my mom and get, you know. So it was nice that Schwartz was very um, protective of me at the time. And, you know, but I, I will say that it was pretty obvious that they don't give anybody the benefit of the it doubt. It even seemed like Brock was a Brock was really kind. He too. was. He was so kind. He came and he followed me. It was really nice. And yeah. even Jeremiah, the producer, came and he like, yeah. gave me a hug. It was really nice. Yeah. Even Brock was like, Sheena, enough yeah, with stop. the Joe Yeah, bit. stop. Like, Brock was like, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. 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 Again, they are not really talking about the fact that you might have had a panic attack. The only person that really suggested that you might have had a panic attack was Kristen, and she was relating to you and knowing that this is something that has been part of your life. And as a friend at the time, she was there for you during these panic attacks. And even though she's not your friend anymore, she was talking about it on her podcast, which I did also talk about it in part one, because here we go, we're going around in circles again, um, that Kristen wasn't being mean by talking about it. She was accusing people of using their podcast to talk about her mental health and how that's not a good thing and no one should be talking about people's mental health. But really, Kristen was saying, like, I felt bad for her. I saw what those girls did. I knew it wasn't right. I didn't feel like it was right. And knowing Joe, since they were once friends, she knows that she does have issues with panic attacks. And she said it did seem like maybe she was having a panic attack and that she felt really sorry for her. And this is why I mean, maybe this is the reason why this podcast was so long is because they literally kept going in circles. We talked about Hotel Ziggy already and we're back. Like she talked about how people were using their platforms for to talk about her mental health and talked about how people were saying that maybe she had a panic attack and then Rachel asked and it, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going in circles, guys. I'm literally spinning as I talk to you guys in circles. This is the fun I have. In the episode that we saw this week, we see you go with a group of friends to this singles party. Okay, so in the episode this week, I end up doing Schwartz's hair blonde, and he invites me to a single, the singles night. And uh-huh. I actually kind of invite myself, and he kind of goes, oh, 
Okay. What are the colored wristbands? So colored wristbands are red means you're taken, green means that you're single, and then yellow means that you don't really know complicated. Okay. So on the way to the event, um, Schwartz and I were in the same Uber together, and of course we went together, and we were there in the in the mindset that we were going to go and support Sandoval, right? Because he's single. Mm. Sorry to bring, but you know, at the Oops. moment, well, it's whatever. <laughs> so it's like you know me and Schwartz, and I was like, I'll just take along, right? In the car ride, Schwartz was like, Yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do like a yellow or a red, and I was like, Yeah, me too. And the second he slaps on that green wristband, I thought. Mm, I guess I'll slap on a green wristband as well. Because th- when he said, I'm going to do yellow or red, that was off camera, correct? Correct. It was on the way to the Uber, off of camera, of course. Of course. And um, yes, yes. And so we get there and I'm thinking, oh, then I'm totally okay with this. We're just going to do, I mean, I kind of was a little bit irritated that he wanted to do like a yellow, but mm-hmm. and not a red. But I was like, okay, well, whatever one it is, like, we'll just, you know, go through the night and be fine. We're just here to support Sandoval and like be there for him in his single night. And so yeah. then at that moment, I remember sitting there and he slept on a green wristband and I remember thinking... I just couldn't even believe it. And then I decided that I was going to slap on a green wristband as well because mm. I didn't really know how to navigate this. And then um, we all got up and we started mingling and I had to go to the bathroom. And when I came back out, he was making out with somebody, but I didn't see it. Um, but he was like talking to this girl and you saw him talking to her. Yes, I saw him talking to her. She was trying to take his hat. The hat that she was trying to take off of his head in this episode was a very special hat that his dad had given him. Mm-hmm. And that's why I went in and I decided to be kind of like a mom or like a little like bit of a protective person. And I said, look, Schwartz, are you sure that you want to give that hat away? And he was like, yeah, 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 I got more of my storage unit. And I was like, no, you don't, because I knew that he didn't. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, well, can you give that back to me, to the girl? And I was like, I did my work, right? I did yeah. what I had to do. Whether or not he gets the hat back, okay. So then I walked away. What you don't see is that Schwartz and I go to the bar, and we were deciding to have a shot. And then um, I come back, and the girl's wearing the hat, and he's trying to get the hat back. And I'm like, well, I did what I did. Yeah. And I look at how he's very flirtatious and he's wearing the green wristband and I'm just putting two and two together and I'm thinking, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. So I leave before he makes out with this girl. So I decide to, you know, to go. And um, I, I do my I do the best way that I can, which is kindly say like, hey, I'll see you later. I left. And yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I can only control my actions. I mean, it was tough to watch. Yeah. But then I found out later. Months later, when I did my confessionals and interviews, they told me that he made out with somebody. I never knew that. He came home, and by home I mean his apartment, that night. And I was sleeping in my bedroom, you know, because I had to do hair. This is this is also something I want to clear up really quickly. I have a lot of clients in Burbank, so it's easy for me to sleep in his um, in his second bedroom. But at the time, we were dating. So um, wherever bedroom we wanted to sleep in, it wasn't a big deal. But um, I went home, and he came home, and I was like, did you uh, have a good night? He was like, yeah. And I was like, did you... Did you lock, you know me, I'm like, did you lock lips with a, did you smooch? And he's like, no, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. And I'd already taken out the dogs. I was able to like, you know, lock up the apartment. I was able to just, and I was finally ready to like shower and go to bed. And he comes in and he's just like wasted. And I'm like, okay. Mm. And then I don't find out until later that it's like the 14th lie that he's told me about, you know, I found out later. And then I now find out that he's made out with somebody and I don't care if it's meant to be or not meant to be. I think that he just likes to make out with people and he gets really drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, that is all I've been hearing from Rachel. And here we go again with like talking in circles. And like I said, I don't know if this is like part of her ADHD, which nothing against that at all. If it is because of that, like I said, I can completely understand. Completely. But, like, right here is a perfect example where, like, she repeated the same thing twice. How, like, they went to the event, and then she went to the bathroom, and when she came back, the girl was wearing the hat. And I really don't want to repeat it since you've already heard it twice. But she did what she had to do, guys. This is where I feel like maybe if they weren't sure about the situation chip that they were in, this is where you should have had a conversation with him And been like, what's going on between us? You slapped on a green wristband. You're making out with some girl, which you didn't find out until later. But, you know, even you slapped on a green wristband. The only reason I did it was because we had just talked about this and then you do this. That That would have been a perfect opportunity to talk to him about everything and learn what was going on with the situationship. And, And that's like the 12th, 14th, whatever lie he told her welcome to Katie's world again. He lied to Katie their entire relationship. He did things like cheat on her their entire relationship. And him being a makeout 
whore or slut, whatever word you want to use, a makeout slut when he's drunk, is not an excuse. You cannot use that, oh, I was show wasted, and that is why I made out with somebody. That to me is just an excuse. Always been an excuse with Schwartz. I almost called him Sandoval. Always been an excuse though with Schwartz. And people are going to ask or comment. Yes, I do feel bad for Joe. Just like all of the other girls. Which she has admit and yet still is trashing them. What Schwartz did was wrong. What he said was wrong. How he treated her was wrong. And you know who you are. Schwartz ain't getting a pass anymore for me, girl. <laughs> I know. Like, back when this all started, like, I was always like, you know, I don't get why I give Schwartz this pass. And and here I am. He's not getting a pass for me anymore. I did feel bad for him at the beginning of the season. I did have faith that maybe he would, like, you know, cut Sandoval ties and, you know, focus on himself. And, yeah... I've lost all hope for Schwartz. I will say I am happy, though. He is happy with Sophia, the new girlfriend. I don't know their relationship dynamic, so I really can't judge anything. Um, I'm glad that Katie thinks she is delightful, and I hope that, you know, that is a helpful relationship to have. It, you know, even the fact that, like, their divorce, it's a great relationship to have, you know, with your ex-husband's new partner and your ex. Even if she had a boyfriend, you would hope that Schwartz and her new boyfriend would, you know, get along for the most part. But, like I said, I do feel bad for Joe because she definitely got Schwartzed. She definitely got Schwartzed. And I feel terrible that that happened to her. I really do. So, that's that. <sighs> I'm sorry. That's so hard. I, and it's actually crazy to like not knowing until production tells you like, oh, by the way. Why can't Schwartz tell me that? Right. It's like, well, if we Mind captured blowing. it on camera, then. Because did they capture it? Yeah. 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 They got it on camera. He came home that night and he told me that he didn't make out with anybody. So like, he so knew, production told me over him. He knew also that you were going to find out eventually, but he didn't have enough You're integrity so right. to tell you himself. There it is. I'm not trying to make somebody out to be the bad person or anything because but I will say this, like, the fact that production had to be, like, not had to, but they, I mean, I remember, like, looking at Natalie, and she was like, just want to let you know, I'm not really supposed to tell you this, but, like, you know, Schwartz did make out with somebody that night, and I was like, <clears throat> what? Jeez. Well, again, didn't she just say that he was, like, wasted when he got home? And we all know Schwartz, he doesn't remember when he's that wasted if he made out with somebody or not. So maybe in his mind, even though he was completely wasted and trash when he got back, maybe in his mind he thought that he didn't do anything wrong or made out with anybody. So him lying to her, honestly, might have just been something he didn't remember. And if he did, even to say like the next day, yeah, he should have told her. He definitely should have. And then there's Rachel going like, well... I mean, he would have had to tell you because it was aired. So he wasn't going to tell you knowing that it was going to be on the show? Maybe he didn't think it would be something that made it onto the show. And production telling her, sometimes they tell people things, even though they shouldn't, to start issues, to have some drama, to kind of see what someone will do or say, and help push the context of everything going on. Or story. You know what I mean? Production does and says things to get people to respond. <laughs> and I think even more now, after learning what happened last season and everything, I think that they are going to do that a little bit more too. Just to make sure, like, whatever they see is getting relayed. Though, they're, they're saying it's a secret. I definitely want to learn more about the production aspect of everything and how production is with VPR and all of that. I think they're 
production panel at BravoCon was amazing, but that is totally something I would just love to know more about. And I really do, like, hope that Peacock, at least, does, like, a production special of, like, maybe a behind-the-scenes of season 11. That would be great. Or maybe at BravoCon. But I did hear rumblings that they're not doing a BravoCon this year, that it's going to now be every other year. So we will have to see. I will say this. If BravoCon comes back to New York, I'm going. I Like I said, only live an hour and a half away from New York City because I'm in Connecticut. So that would be amazing. And I would totally be down. I would vlog it all for you. And we would have a kick-ass time just by me going. <laughs> and I would make sure to document it all for you guys. But we will have to see. If you guys know anything about BravoCon, please let me know down below. And let me know what you think about all of this, too. All right, guys. We are rounding the end. Let's go. Okay. I want to talk about this for a second. Yeah, tell me. Because you've called me a few times, like, struggling, trying to get over shorts. And you asked me, like, how did I do it? How did I get over Sandoval? I always say I'm four months behind you. And I was like, it was very difficult it was yeah. so hard like I was so hung up on it yeah I gave you advice that one of my therapists asked me to do she was like why don't you create a fantasy busters list and I <laughs> and I told I tell Joe this she's like what a, a what list a what busters list and I'm like okay well basically it's a list yes. of like yes all of the facts yes. that you know for sure things that you've witnessed that are undeniable of like the red flags, the things that the situations that they put you through, the things that like, you know, without a doubt, the boundaries that were crossed. That the, never crossed your mind until you decided to have somebody like a friend tell you like, maybe yeah. write them down. Yeah. So when you write them down Ooh. and you see this list, yes, it it's is so it pulls you out of denial. Like it, it brings yes. you into reality because yes. you're not living in this fantasy of yes. who you want this person to be. I mean, he never went to my basketball games. He never came and watched me surf. He never, you know, things like that. He never wanted to go paddle boarding with me on the West side. Schwartz never wanted to even come to the West side. I always had to go to, I mean, things that I loved, he just didn't care. You know, he just kind of, I mean, I just, I, I was assuming that, it, I mean, I even got him a basketball jersey for the, for the, you know, the team, the basketball league that I'm in. And I got Schwartz with my number on the back, you know, I'm number eight. Love you, Kobe. And he never went to one game. There was no, I mean, it was like he wanted to just kind of keep me into this little tiny. And it was all for show for him. I mean, he just wanted to be on camera. It wasn't even like. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think part of the reason why you chose to do Vanderpump Rules season 11 was, was because, because of shorts. He asked you to. Correct. If Vanderpump Rules does a season 12 and they ask you to go back, would you do another season? Yes, for $1 million. I had a great adventure. It was awesome. I also will say, gosh darn it, you learn a lot, kids. You learn a lot. Yeah. But I'm focused on my my uh, Joe My Gosh hats, and I'm focused on my hair business, and I'm focused on my friendships and my family. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Do you want people to follow you? Yeah, Joe My Gosh. At Joe My Gosh? Yeah, at J-O-M-Y-G-O-S-H. Um, Love that. Instagram, that's all I have. And it's not J-O-E, it's just J-O. Done. Do you think that there's going to be another season? Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. I do, too. I think maybe they'll have one more season because um, the ratings are good. Yeah. Well, thanks to you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And <laughs> A fantasy busters list. Very, very interesting. I wonder what's on Joe's list as I do wonder what is on Rachel's list. I thought for sure, like, she was going to have Joe read hers. Though that, like I said, would be interesting to hear, but she didn't. And I do think there's going to be a season 12 for sure. I don't believe that's going to be the last season either. But we will all have to wait and see. Joe, I'll go back for a million dollars. So what does that really mean? Would you go back? For season 12. Don't make a joke about it. We wanted to know if you would go back. Now that Schwartz and you aren't even speaking. You only really have an ally with Sandoval. Though the girls now feel bad for you. But I think after everything they hear here. They might just be like girl we just stuck up for you. We said we were sorry. And here you are. This is why. Like. So I'm not sure if she would even have them as allies. 
and of course Rachel's thoughts whether or not they're gonna have another season and there there goes Joe well because of you of course that's the only reason why like the show continued I know I added some words but you get what I mean she was like because of you of course uh no honey there in my heart of hearts there would have been a, a season 12 whether the affair happened or not and there were two people in this affair you and Sandoval, Rachel, there are other people on the show that are doing other things with their life. We still have Ariana, who was the victim, not knowing that her friend and her boyfriend at the time were having an affair for seven months, which I do get it. It happened at the end of season 10. I almost said 11. At the end of 10. But even... If 10 ended the way that it did, I still believe season 11 would have existed. Which I don't want to get into it, but even Alex Baskin said during one of his podcasts that he did, or it could have been like a Bravo after show. I can't remember exactly where he said it. I know he said it a couple times though. That even if Sandoval didn't have it happen, they had plans for season 11. Though there was rumblings that it could have been canceled after 10. But hey, good luck to Joe and her hat business. Maybe that's why she is so concerned about people being concerned that she wears a hat, though she's a hairdresser. So now she's capitalizing off of that which hey good for her and making money because it was such a thing kind of like the send it to daryl that will forever be one of my favorite moments and clips and all of that but guys i hope you have a wonderful day, evening, whatever time it is for you. I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. Don't worry. Chapter 19 is on its way out the door too. I really, really appreciate you guys being patient with me doing this in two parts. It was a lot. It was longer than a majority of her podcasts have been. And it was just a little frustrating, so I wanted to make sure that all of the points got across. We were able to show context to things and better understand what Joe was saying, as well as Rachel. And also, personally, I have been dealing with a lot in my real life, and I told some of you guys in the comments for part one that... Um, my boyfriend was in the hospital. Don't worry, he's okay, but he still needs to go to his regular doctor so we can kind of figure out what's going on there. So it really does mean a lot that you guys have been so thoughtful and kind to me and understood why I had to do this in two parts. But don't worry, I will be pumping them out for us again. I got another Lala Amazon Live. Like I said, she did two in one week <laughs> last week, which is quite different than her normal Amazon Live schedule where she does at least once a month. We got chapter 19. I want to go through disrespectfully and see what they had to say regarding everything this week. Plus, we have the lawsuit stuff to go over. So let me know down below what you are looking forward to the most. And if there is a podcast that maybe I don't do regularly, let me know down below because I would be more than happy to do more podcasts, more regular for us. Even if it isn't a Vanderpump Rules one, I would love to do some of these Housewives podcasts. They have some interesting ones out there for sure. But anyways, guys, again, have a wonderful night, evening, day, whatever it is for you. And I will be back very, very soon. Bye, everybody. This episode of Rachel Goes Rogue, we've got... <gasps> Joe, oh my gosh! Ah, Joseph! Joseph! I'm so excited!
Yes. This uh this is gonna be one that you don't wanna miss. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. yes. That's cool. Are you kidding? We have to play that. Tacos. Wait, let's get some tokens and some tacos and home? some tequila, the train factor and the tea. Hi. What's up, guys? This is such a cool place. Oh my gosh. Uh, Jesus. It's my pants. We should do a shot. Shot. And then I'll do a good beer as well. And then same with me. Thank you so much. Don't look at me. I want all the good luck. Look me in the eye and tell me you're not a tall gray. <laughs> I'm not a tall gray. <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced. Oh. Literally everyone in my life, whenever I bring you around, they're like, is that, is that your... You'd be like, oh, this is just my sister. That's really weird, because some people don't even have sex. If I say you're my sister, it's... Oh, it's up. Thank you so much. Oh, my God, it looks so good. Oh, that is amazing. <sighs> just <laughs> oh, I want to burn all the bridges between us. Mm.